Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z. And today, I'm here with another game in my uh, lifetime season uh, game in out-of-the-park baseball for the Louisville Colonels. I have still managed to maintain my job as the manager of the Colonels. Um, and... Uh, as you can see, well, or as you will see right now, we are actually respectable. Now, if you remember, I did, and I will show you this in a minute, um, my lifetime managerial record. If you remember, the first two seasons with Louisville were horrible. We were absolutely a garbage, hot garbage in a, you know, in a trash dumpster. But Right now, we're 32 and 35. Now, we're under 500. I'll give you that. We're under 500. But in comparison, as you will see, to the previous two seasons that I did, because I'm in my third season right now as Louisville's manager, um, as you will see, the, um, the 32 and 35 record is actually a lot uh, better than I did before so let's go to my uh, let's show you that manager history so you can see in 1896 we were um, 39 and 101 in 1897 we took a step back and we were 36 and 104 and now I am 32 and 35 so you can see massive improvement there 107 and 240 for my lifetime percentage, which, you know, it's going to take quite a while to get that up. But we'll see. And of course, this is in out of the park. Um, the, uh, you know, who, who you get is just based on where you draft and, you know, the actual players at the time that were available and, you know, who gets them and, you know, that type of thing. So, um, We'll see, I mean, because we're still, as you can see, we're, let me go back here. We're still the 11th of 16 teams. So we're still in line to have a pretty high draft pick. Um, but we're playing better and I'm happier about the fact that we're playing better. So it is nice to see that. Um, and so I guess with that, we will play the game against the Senators. Uh, first, I'm going to make sure I turn down the sound. For the computer. And now we will proceed to the game against the Senators. And uh, so let's see. I, eh, that's about my general lineup. We got Ruzi on the mound again. Of course, back... Now, you're, you're probably wondering, because you're probably thinking to yourself, every time I see this guy put up a game, Ruzi pitches for him. Well, that's because we only have a three-man staff. This is the 1890s. You only had two or three starting pitchers. So, um, so there's that. Um, one thing I will say, as, as I have said before, one thing I really like about playing back in the 1890s is the starters can go the entire game. Their bar doesn't get used up, and I'll mention that again when I show it, um, you know, when we get out there. But their bar doesn't get up, get used up quickly. But if you play a more modern game, like you play the, a team from the 2000s, a starting pitcher is going to be, he's going to be starting to get gassed by the, you know, fifth inning. Which is, you know, I mean, I think it's ridiculous. In real life, they're not really gassed by then, but that's when pitcher, when the managers take them out. But anyway, I digress. But I do like that in this game, they actually pitch. Um, they can actually pitch the entire game. Even if they're terrible, even if they're not pitching well, that's still better. It's still better to have them. Um, 
at it. Let me see. Let me put myself right here. Seems to be almost the perfect spot. Although anything hit to right field, you're not going to see it. But, you know. So anyway, uh, Rusey's out there on the mound. We're facing the Senators, who are one of the better teams in the league. And he will pitch. And they should have his stats up here. Yeah, he's six and ten with a four fifty four earned run average. And that's gonna be a fly to center and an out. Nice. Ducky Holmes is up. And one thing that's gonna be interesting to see as we go on with my lifetime. Um, managing the Colonels was at some point the Colonels folded and they became the Pirates or something like that. So, But they definitely folded. There's no Louisville Colonels today in baseball. So at some point it's going to be interesting to see what happens to the Colonels. Um, let me move myself over here. And he's out and Fielder Jones is out. Um, but it will be I'll be very interested to see what happens with that part of the bay. Like, are the Colonels going to stay in baseball because I'm the manager of the team? You know, be interesting to see. Okay, uh, we got a man at second, one out, and McCreary is up. And he walks. Nice. We got two on with one out. Kid Nance up, and Kid Nance is going to pop out. So two down, two on, here in the bottom of the first. And uh, Deacon McGuire is up. Love Deacon McGuire. And he is going to be out. So we go to the top of the second. And in a second, I'll show you what I'm talking about with the uh, with the bar, the pitcher bar. See, it's right here. This is Ruzi's bar, and you can see he's still solidly at the end in the green, as if he hadn't even really started pitching yet. And you'll see by the end of the game, or whenever I take him out, or by the end of the game, you'll see that he doesn't get any further to, than like into the yellow. But a modern day pitcher will be gassed before, way before the end of the game. There's a walk. That guy's not going to steal. He's a 45 runner. Oh, and there's going to be an error on the first baseman. That's the, that, now that is one thing I don't like about the 1890s baseball is you see a lot of errors. Because there were a lot of errors. You see a lot more than in... Um, than in the modern day. So it's kind of a trade-off. The pitchers go longer, but people make more errors. All right, two down. He can get out of this, let's hope. And it looks like he will. So we get out of it, base is loaded, but we left him loaded. Cartwright, Ed Cartwright is up, and he strikes out. So I love, I do love the game though. I love this. Um, I love the graphics of it. I'm just not sure how realistic it really is, but uh, yeah, we got a man on second now, with one out. And we and we, uh, oh yeah, we didn't score last time. That is going to be a fly out. Oh yes, it will. And I'm going to say no. I don't want to advance. Two down, and a fly ball to right. So, 0-0 zero, zero game, top of the third inning. Ruzi allows a base hit. And it's a 60. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pitch out just to keep him honest. And uh, hopefully that's a double play, but no, no reason to throw to first. I mean, there was, but 
they did. I guess they didn't turn a lot of double plays in the back in the day either. So he was safe stealing second. But that should be a fly out if the guy doesn't make an error, and he didn't. So there's two down. And he will throw him out good. Sometimes you'll see on a play like that, you'll see the first baseman do a, like a little lob and the ball moves very slowly to the pitcher. And you know that that's good. the guy's going to be safe on that. All right, Fielder Jones. Back to the top of the order for me, and he walks. Uh, yeah, let me, let me try to steal second and see if it works. And he's going. He's going. And he is safe. Nice. Stolen base. Billy Klingman up. And he's going to be safe. That looks like that was an error on the shortstop. Tom McCreary up. I hope we score here. And that's a pop out. One away. Kid Nance. Kid Nance is not going to fly deep enough to get the run home. So there's two down with McGuire up, runners at the corners. And McGuire gets a base hit and knocks in the run. Good to see. So let's see if we can get another key hit here. Ed Cartwright. And he's going to hit it right up the middle and knock in the run. So we got a two-run lead. Do nothing. Gotta love that. Bid McPhee. And the Bid McPhee man is out. Pop out to short. But we got two runs. We got two runs for Rosie. He's been in and out of trouble. But he's managed to keep a run from scoring so far. Let's see if he can keep doing that and put us at 33 and 35. Uh, runners of 55. I'm going to, right now, I'm not going to watch him or, or pitch out or anything. All right. Got the lead. Got the double play. 6 4 3 double play. Ollie Beard. And one thing, like I said before, I've said in other telecasts of my, uh, col my uh, Colonel season, is one reason I wanted to take the Colonels was because they were bad. And so going in, you expect that they're going to be bad. So when you lose a game, you're not mad that you lost a game. Like, and there's nothing more annoying than in this, in this game particularly, but in really any game, any baseball game, where you take a team from a season that was supposed to be, the team was supposed to be pretty good. All right, nice error. Thank you. Where the team is supposed to be pretty good or actually really good and they struggle and they don't win a lot. Billy Klingman. Billy Klingman, he was he was better earlier in the season. But anyway, we got a three nothing lead. Tom McCreary. And McCreary's gonna get one right over the third baseman's head. We've got two on, two out, Kid Nance up. And he strikes out. But three nothing lead. Let's see if Ruzi can hold it. Yeah, Ruzi's on top of his game today. And I have a feeling that that's going to stay the uh, that's going to stay in place. Th that's how it tends to work. Um, let's let's pitch out. We got a 60 runner at first. Oh, they got it through. All right, maybe not. Maybe he won't. But who knows? Ducky Holmes, come on. Oh, no. Base hit. That guy's going to score. All right, it's 3-1. All right, I, I guess I spoke too soon because Ruzi now is getting his ass handed to him. 
All right, uh, three to two. Nightfall, we hit the batter, so the bases are loaded. That's gonna be a home run. Back in an era when they didn't hit home runs, he hits a grand slam home run. Come on. I love that close up. All right, it's 6-3 now. So I spoke too soon, Ruzi is not going to cruise. He is in a lot of trouble. But see, here's, I want to point this out though. We're in the fifth inning. He's allowed six runs, but yet he's not even really quite to the yellow yet on his, you know, fatigue bar. If this were a guy pitching for, you know, anywhere from the nineties to now, he would already be gassed and you would have to take him out. Cause in this game, they almost, I mean, it like, you know, 20 guys will get on between every out. So you can't keep a gassed player in the game and out of the park. You can do it in Stratomatic. Stratomatic, that's fine. You got a gassed player, you can keep him in. You just got to hope that those, um, you know, uh, those outs with the, those outs with the asterisk after him don't come up. But in this game, they just absolutely are not going to be effective. And we're still in this game. I mean, we're only down by three. It's the 1800s. So we're not necessarily done just yet. But uh, yeah. We are in the top of the sixth, though. We got us. We've got to get off our. Uh, got to get off our asses and get some runs. There's an out. Good. That's a strikeout. Good. Yeah. Now he settles down. He couldn't have settled down during that six-run outburst or that four-run outburst that they had. Or really, it was, yeah, maybe it was six runs that they got all in one inning. So, 6-3, uh, Ruzi up at the plate. Got to let him hit. And he's not a bad hitter. Of course, that's another byproduct of being in the 1890s. The pitchers are not paraplegics with the bat. Fielder Jones... Fielder Joe Owens, he's out. Oh man, great diving catch there. Billy Klingman. Gets hit by a pitch. That brings up Tom McCreary. McCreary going down the line. So we're gonna have runners at the corners with two down and Kid Nance up. But Kid Nance is going to fly out. So we're in the seventh. Out, fly out. And he goes down the line, but the third baseman snags it and throws him out. No errors, no nothing. Nice. And this should be a fly out, and it is. So we're, uh, yeah, down by three. We got to get three runs. Deacon McGuire up, bottom of the seven. And he hits a, he gets a base hit. Ed Cartwright, Ed Cartwright, doubling into the gap. That should score a run. And it's gonna be a triple. It's gonna be, not be a double, it's a triple. Another, yet another feature of being in the 1800s is you see a lot of triples, a lot more than the current day. 
Bid McPhee with a man 90 feet away and no outs, and we're only down by two now. And he's going to get an infield out, but that's going to score the uh, run that makes it 6-5. And only one out and Ollie Beard up. And Ollie Beard's out. So if Ruzi truly is now settled down in the bottom of the seventh. Oh, wait. Yeah, all right. We're not. Yeah, now we're out. If Ruzi truly is settled down. We might just be able to claw our way back and win this game. Which would be big against one of the better teams in the league. Bill Gray is up. He's out. Two down. And he strikes him out. Nice. And I think Ruzi's coming up. We may pinch hit for him. No, he just, we just cleared Ruzi last inning. Back to the top of the lineup. All right. Uh, hmm. So hard to decide whether I should get the bullpen up. I think I'm going to, though. I'm going to get George Blackburn up. And Fielder Jones up at the plate. And Fielder Jones is going down the line. Double. Nice double for Fielder. And we got Billy Klingman. Come on, Klingman. At least move him over. Whatever you do. And he did. Nice. So we got a runner 90 feet away with uh, one out and Tom McCreary up. And he is going to ground out to the pitcher. No advancement. Two down. Kid Nance up. And Kid Nance is going to get a base hit and knock in the tying run. Now I don't know. I think we need to sit down. We may have to sit him down. Because... Um, uh, one thing about the about the, you know when I was talking about the pitchers bars, their um, fatigue bars, and that's not the same for relievers. Relievers get burned up quickly, so and we're in a tie game right here. Yeah, I'm gonna pitch. Uh, he's stealing. And he stole it. God. And he walked the next guy. I should have, man, I should have brought Blackburn in. All right, fly out. Let's see if he can, he can still get out of this. That's going to be a pop out. All right, all right. Uh, yeah, John J. Anderson. Oh, wild pitch or a pass ball or whatever. All right, runners at second and third. We can't afford another one of those. And we can't afford a single either, by the way. And that's a two-run single, scores two runs. And, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't like this at all. And they stole. And that's the third out. But of course it's the third out after they score two runs. All right, Ed Cart right up. Base hit, nice way to start it. Bid McPhee. Bid McPhee. Nice. He rips it through. All right. And now I'm going to go get the bullpen up because we might just be able to tie this game. Let's get Blackburn back up. And he's cold. Okay, that's fine. And who is up? Ollie Beard is up. You know what? I'm going to pinch hit for Ollie Beard. 
Righty on the mound. So we'll go with Charlie Abbey pinch hitting for for beer. Yes. All right, well, at least he didn't hit into a double play. And now Ruzi is up. I'm going to pinch hit for Ruzi. Righty on the mound. Need a lefty or a switch hitter. Don't really have any more lefties. Switch hitter Henry Lynch. All right. And it looks like he dropped it or bobbled it or whatever and couldn't make the play. So it's 8 7, and Fielder Jones, good hitter. He's going to ground out, and that's two down. But we got a man 90 feet away. Anything, a, you know, pass, ball, anything like that. Billy Klingman. No, he doesn't beat it out. Ah, that was a tough loss. So, let's go down and look at the stats here. Jones, one for five. Klingman, two for five. Cartwright, four for five. That dude had a day. Ruzi, nine innings pitched, ten hits, eight earned runs. Yes, I mean, you see what I mean? He gave up 10 hits in nine innings and eight earned runs, and he wasn't even close to being gassed. You're not going to see that in the 80s, 90s, 2000s uh, in Out of the Park. That won't happen. So, yeah, we're, uh, let's see, standings. And we go to 32 and 36. And we're tied with the St. Louis Browns at 32 and 36. And uh, we are three games ahead of the Cleveland Spiders. So that's going to be it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.